is in continuation of the world that was, the world that is, and the world that is to come. This subtitle lesson is continued on part two of Balance of Nature. What is this balance of nature? Well, because of the fall of man and because of the sin that's entered into the world, God in his wisdom had no alternative other than to have this balance of nature so that this world can continue in a positive state. So the balance of nature has caused a lot of things to happen. And in the balance of nature, you have predators and you have prey. You have decomposers and you have different scavengers. See, these things is what keeps the nature in balance. Because if you didn't have these things because of the sin that's in the world, then you would either have an overpopulation or you would have an underpopulation. And you would have a lot of dis uh, uh, distinction of animals. So God in his wisdom has allowed these things to come to pass up until the end time. Because it's not going to always be this way. This balance of nature was not in God's perfect will. But God had no alternative because of the sin that was in the world that was. And then when Adam gave it over to the devil, that same bondage of corruption came into this world as well. So, what we're going to do today in this part two lesson, we're going to go to Genesis. And let's talk about Noah. You see, you know we've talked about how God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and put them into chains of bondage to be reserved into the day of judgment. You see, he did not spare that old world either. But he saved Noah's world. You see, so there's a difference between the world that was and Noah's world. So we're going to expound on that. So let's turn to uh, Genesis, the sixth chapter. And glory be to God for his word. Now, if you remember in my previous lesson, um, concerning the world that was, I talked about the sixth chapter of Genesis, how in the sixth chapter and the first verse through the seventh verse was inserted when you're talking about the different, uh, um, the, the different civilization that took pass, that took a uh, uh, pass in the world that was versus Noah's world. So God in his wisdom has inserted this into Genesis to expound on the generations of the world that was. Because if you remember, I talked about uh, in the fifth chapter, it says, this is the book of the generations of Adam, in verse number one, in the day that God created man, in the likeness God created he him. So he talks about the generation of the Adam man, and then it goes all the way down here in the, in the 32nd verse, it says, and nor was 500 years old, and Noah begot Shem, and Ham, and Zaphite. But look at the first verse, it said, and it came to pass. Well, what happened, if you look at the 32nd verse, and you go all the way over to the 6th chapter and the 1st verse, it's a continuation talking about Noah. Can you see that? Let me say that again. If you look at Genesis, the 5th chapter, the 1st through the 32nd verse, it is continued at the 6th chapter and the 8th verse. Because you notice it talks about Noah again. It says, but Noah. So what God is saying is that in the world that was, he did not spare that old world. But God saved Noah's world. And that same explanation is given in the New Testament when, I, when that scripture speaks about God spared not the angels that sinned in Second Peter. 2, 4, and 5, we talk about that, so that's where you find that. Well, that same indication is given here when it talks about, but Noah found grace in the sight of God. You see what I'm saying? So, being that this was inserted, then as we begin to expound, then we'll know the difference. Now, in the world that was, it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth. That's the first uh, verse. And daughters were born unto them. So men begat these daughters, that the sons of God saw that the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wives of all whom they chose. And the Lord God said, My spirit 
shall not always strive with man. For that he is also flesh, yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. So in the world that was, death entered in. God said he would not strive with that man. His days shall be a hundred and twenty years. Verse number four. And there were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men. So God has given us a time frame. Again, these giants or these big beasts, these creatures that was in the world that was, they were in the earth, you see during this time when this man went bad. Now, I talked about in Genesis how God created the animals first. When he created the first man, he brought the animals uh, first, and then he brought forth man on the sixth day. You see, so the animals were here before mankind. But when he made Adam, he formed him out of the dust of the ground. When he made Adam... Adam was made first, and then the animals were formed out of the dust of the ground. So we're going to talk about those two relationships. But notice it says there were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that. You see, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men, and they bore children to them, the same became the mighty men who were of old, men of renown. And so I talked about the men of renown being this male species that was created from these uh, these true homophodites, when they got together with these daughters, which was the, the woman, which was the new thing that it came forth. Now, let's read on. And God saw the wickedness of men was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was, was what? Was only evil continually. So notice God said the thoughts of his heart. What well, we talked about in the previous lesson, how in the world that was, they could communicate from heart to heart. They knew what they were thinking. That was a higher form of communication. So their thoughts, whatever they thought in their heart was them speaking. And it was always evil. It was always evil thoughts, evil words speaking, evil. And they all understood this. So this was a terrible thing. So what happened? What did God say? And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him too at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth. Look at it now. I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast. Now notice it said the face of the earth. You see, because they were spirit and flesh. In other words, they were flesh also, and they were spirit. God destroyed their flesh off of the face. Well, he did that in order that because these men, there was no saving them. You see, there was always corruption. And see, the reason God didn't spare this world is because when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were they thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish hearts were darkened. You see, so God destroyed that world. It says here, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and creeping thing, and fowls of the air, for it repented me that I have made them. So God repented that, that he, had, he had made that world. You see, so he destroyed that world. Beasts, animals, and everything. But when we talk about Noah's world, God did not destroy everything. Now, he destroyed everything on this earth, but he did not destroy the animals. Because we read about how he led the animals in two by two, some seven by seven. So we're going to compare the two different. So let's talk about Noah's world, which is our world here today, the world that we're in now. And let's find out how Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. So verse number eight says that very same thing. And verse number nine says, these are the generations of Noah. Now look at this. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations. And Noah walked with God. And Noah begat three sons, Sham, Ham, and Zaphat. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. You see. So, <coughs> it says the earth was also corrupt. <coughs> Bless the Lord. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt. And all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. 
Now, look at that. Glory, glory, glory. <clears throat> glory, glory, glory. Yes. Now, let's look at the 12th verse in chapter number 6. And it says, And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupt his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh, the end of all flesh, uh -huh, is come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Mm -hmm. Make thee an ark of gopher wood, room shalt thou make in the heart, and shall pitch it within, and without with pitch. And this is the fashion which thou shalt make it of. Of the length of the ark shall be 300 cubits, the breadth of it 50 cubits, the height of it 30 cubits. A window shalt thou make to the ark, and in the, and in the cubic shalt thou finish it above, and the door of the ark shalt thou set in the side thereof. With lower second, third story shalt thou make it. And behold, I, even I do bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh wherein is the breath of life from under heaven, and everything that is in the earth shall die. But with thee will I establish my covenant, and thou shalt come into the ark, thou and thy sons, thy wife and thy sons' wives with thee. And every living thing of all flesh, two of every sort shall thou bring into the ark, to keep them alive with thee, they shall be male and female, of fowls after their kind, of cattle after their kind, of every creeping thing of the earth after its kind, two of every sort shall come unto thee to keep them alive. And take thou unto thee all food that is eaten, and thou shalt gather it to thee, and it shall be for food for thee and for them. Thus did Noah according to all that God commanded him, so he did. So we read here that Noah has entered into the ark, and he has brought some animals in, two by two, some seven by seven, you see. So we know that God has spared Noah's world because we're here today. But God did not spare that old world, but he spared Noah's world, you see. So when he destroyed that world, because we talked about it in Genesis 1, uh, and verse 1 and verse 2, it says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and earth. And in verse 2, the earth was without form and void. You see, so something happened. So what happened, like I said, God destroyed that old world, but he saved Noah's world. Now, let's read on to the seventh chapter. And the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and all thy house into the ark, for thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. A very clean beast shall thou take to thee by sevens, the male and his female, and of the beasts that are not clean by two, the male and his female. So there it is again. It talks about the, uh, the animals and how it says here, the, take thee uh, by sevens, the male and female, and of the beasts that are not clean by two, the male and his female. A fowl also of the air by sevens, the male and the female, to keep seed alive upon the face of all the earth. For yet seven days, and I will cause it to rain upon the earth, forty days and forty nights. And every living thing that I have made will I destroy from off the face of the earth. And Noah did according unto all that the Lord God had commanded. You see. Now, let's look at verse number 23 in the second verse. And every living thing was the story which was upon the face of the ground, both man and cattle and the creeping things and the fowl of the heaven, and they were destroyed from the earth, and Noah only remained alive, and they that were with him in the ark. And the waters prevailed upon the earth a hundred and fifty days. So, it says right here that every living thing was destroyed, except the things that was in the ark. You see, so... Now, in the world that was, God destroyed man. Look at it again. Look at the sixth chapter. What did he destroy? I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth. 
You see, so God destroyed that man from the face of the earth. But here, every living thing was destroyed, which is upon the face of the ground. You see, so God is letting you know that uh, the face of the ground means everything that was on the ground, of the, the face of the ground itself was destroyed. But in the world that was, all men was destroyed. You know, off the face of the earth. Well, see, all men was not destroyed off the face of the earth with Noah because Noah was still on the what? He was still on the face of the earth. Even though he was up in the ark, he was still on the face of the earth. So there's a difference between the two. Now, let's elaborate even more. Look at the 8th chapter, okay, and the 15th verse. Let's look at that. Well, uh, this is after the ark had, uh, had rested in the seventh month, on the seventh day of the month, upon the mountains of Ariat. Ariat. Now, and God said unto Noah, saying, in verse 15, Go forth from the ark, thou and thy wife, and thy sons and thy sons wives with thee bring forth with thee every living thing that is with thee and of all flesh both of fowl and of cattle and of every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth that they may breed look at that abundantly in the earth and be fruitful and multiply upon the earth and Noah went forth and his sons and his wives and his sons wives with him Every beast, every creeping thing, every fowl, and whatsoever creepeth upon the earth after their kinds went forth out of the ark. And Noah built an altar unto the Lord, and took of every clean beast, and of every clean fowl, and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And the Lord smelled a sweet savor, and the Lord said in his heart. Now look at the Lord saying in his heart. This is how God speaks. He speaks from the heart. You see, but God says in his heart, I will not. So in other words, God didn't say this verbally where he could, where it could be heard. But he said it in his heart. But see, as you know, God speaks from the heart. See, this is how we were in our original creation. We spoke from the heart. And when we spoke from the heart, that's how we communicated. Everybody uh, could hear it. You see. So God spoke from his heart. I will not again curse the ground anymore for man's sake. Well, he said, I will not again curse the ground. But well, when did he curse it before? Well, he cursed it in the very beginning, in the world that was, when that man went bad and God destroyed this world and shook, and shook it upside down. He cursed his ground, you see. And so, you know, he had a tree that, uh, that, that grew in the, in the garden. And that tree of life and also that tree of knowledge of good and evil. You see, was there, and uh, Adam, when he gave place to the devil, that curse came upon this earth again. So God cursed this ground again. You see, it was cursed then, then it was cursed again. But God said, listen, I will not again curse the ground anymore for man's sake. For the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. So the imagination of man's heart. So see, this man, this Adam man that's, that's on this earth, even from Noah's time, this man's heart, what does it say? It says the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. So from your youth is your accountability. But notice it says the man's heart is evil. You see that? Well, this is Revelation 9. And let us expound and increase. If you turn to, let's turn to the, uh, the sixth chapter and the fifth verse. Keep your finger with me back here, okay? Keep your finger right here on the 21st verse, and then let's turn over here. Turn over here to the 6th chapter, and look at verse number 5. And God saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Well, you see, that sounds just like this uh, sounds, doesn't it? Well, let's read it again. If you look at verse 21, it says, I would not again curse the ground, anymore for man's sake, for the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. The imagination of man's heart. Over here it says, the thought, the imagination of the thoughts of his heart. Well, see, there's a difference between the imagination of the thoughts of his heart versus the imagination is evil continually. Man's heart versus the imagination. Well, let me just break it down to you. 
In the world that was, these men communicated with the thoughts of the heart. This is how they lived. This is how they were created. And so their thoughts, which is more heavier spoken than their, than their verbal speech, because that of the heart is what they believe, this is how they live. God said their thoughts is evil continually. So they, when they were created, and every time they came forth and born, they were all evil. You see, but in the world that we're in today, sin is here, but they're not continued, they're not classified as being evil thoughts until you're at your youth of your accountability. So in the world that was, they were all accountable for their sins. So they all, there was none found righteous. That whole world was destroyed. But in this world, there is accountability. So until a person reaches that age of accountability, he is still considered without sin. But once he reaches his youth, God say automatically, you, you are of your father the devil. And the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer and a liar from the beginning, and a bold, not in the truth, for there is no truth in him. For when he speaketh, he speaketh a lie, for he is a liar and a father of it. You see, so that devil is your father, and that devil is your father if you are not in God. After you reach that certain age of your youth, your heart is evil. I don't care how pretty you look, I don't care how well you sing, I don't care how good you dress, you are considered evil. And the only life that can give you the God kind of life is through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Can you say amen? Amen. Now, so what God is saying is that the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite any more everything living as I have done. So, we know that God doesn't like sin. And it repented God that he had made them in the world that was. And he destroyed everything. You see. But God found, uh, uh, Noah found grace in the eyesight of God. And God spared Noah's world. So we're here today because God spared Noah. Thank God for Noah. You see. So here again in the 8th chapter of Genesis. It says in the 21st verse. I'll read the last part of it. Neither will I again smite any more everything living as I have done. While the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, and the day and night shall not cease. So what God is saying is, is as long as the earth remaineth, there's coming a time when this earth is not going to remain. You see, and this earth is going to be done away with, you see. And so when this earth is done away with, these things will cease. But until that time, these things will continue. And as long as these things are continued, so is this devil man, the Satan is allowed to be here. You see. So, verse number, let's look at chapter number 9, it says, And God blessed Noah and his sons, and said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and fill the earth. And the fear of you, and the dread of you, shall be upon every beast of the earth. So, the fear of man, and the dread of man, is upon these animals. You see. Now, in, uh, when God uh, first create, uh, uh, formed these animals out of the ground for Adam, see, he brought the animals so that um, um, Adam could call them. Adam gave them a name. So they are worth to answer to man. And it was a beautiful thing. They lived in peace and harmony. There was no prey. There was no predators. There was no scavengers. There was no composers. These things were in a balance. And the balance was the perfect balance. You see, it wasn't nature balancing things out. It was the way that God had, he had order. But when these, when this sin came in, you see that there was, uh, then in order to keep things going on, we had, God in his wisdom created the balance of nature. But notice he says the fear of you. So these animals and these creatures, they have fear. But see, the original way they had respect, you see, but they have fear. Fear and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the earth, and upon every fowl of the air, upon all that moveth upon the earth, and upon all the fish of the sea, and to your hand are they delivered. So in your hand are they delivered. So you've been, these things have been delivered to mankind. They've been delivered. Now notice, they were delivered. So notice there's a difference between the world that was. In the world that was, that original men, 
that first man, okay, he had dominion. You see, he had dominion over all the earth. But see, unto this, this thing, this world, it is delivered unto him. Before, he had dominion over it. Now it's got to be delivered. Dominion versus delivered. There's a difference. It's like there's a, a, a repercussion, you see. Now, and it says here, every, every moving thing that living shall be food for you. So now we know why we have to, we eat these living things, you see. And uh, it says here, even as the green herb have I given you all things. So all things he has given unto us, uh, we eat the herb and we eat the uh, living things. But that was not God's original plan. We did not have to eat uh, these animals, eat these living things for food. You know, we ate, uh, uh, we ate fruit. That was the original, the original way, you see. But flesh with the life thereof, which is the blood thereof, shall ye not eat. And surely your blood of your lives will I require at the hand of every beast, will I require it at the hand of man. Now, Father, now, and surely your blood of your lives will I require at the hand of every beast, will I require it, and, it, and at the hand of man, and at the hand of every man's brother will I require the life of man. Whosoever sheddeth man's blood by man shall his blood be shed, for in the image of God made he him. So this man, this Adam man, was made in the image of God. But notice he's not made in the likeness. Well, we can expound more in that on another lesson. But um, because it was there, it was so led to be spoken. Now, it says here, let's look at, um, we're in the ninth chapter. Let's look at verse number nine. It says, and, and I, behold, I establish my covenant with you and with your seed after you. And every living creature that is with you. Notice this now. God has established a covenant. Not only with, with man. But he's established his covenant with every living creature. Of the fowl. And of the cow. And of every beast of the earth with you. From all that go out of the ark. To every beast of the earth. You see. Now you notice it says. Of every beast of the earth with you. You see, well, the same thing he talked about in Job when he talked about this bema that he created with you. There are certain animals that God has created for us in this world system. Well, there were also animals in that other world system. And those animals he created was, was unique to the world that was, as these animals that is with us is unique to us in this world. And from all that go out of the ark to every beast of the earth, and I will establish my covenant with you, neither shall all flesh be cut off any more by the waters of a flood, neither shall there any more be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, this is the token of the covenant which I have made between me and you. Notice he said between me and you. But he went on to say, and with every living creature that is with you, for perpetual generation. So God has made a covenant with these animals. So we have a uh, we have a covenant, and also these animals have a covenant. You see that God would allow them to to, to be here. He would no longer uh, uh, destroy them. You see until this earth is done away with. Isn't that something? So what is this covenant that God has with animals? Well, we're going to break it down even further. In, in momentarily. But let's uh, read on to uh, verse number 13. It says, I do set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be for a token of a covenant between me and the earth. And it shall come to pass when I bring a cloud over the earth that the bow shall be seen in the cloud. That's the rainbow. And I will remember my covenant which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh and the water shall no more become a flood to destroy all flesh. So God has made this covenant that he would no more send water to destroy all flesh. Because he did it in the world that was. We talked about it. How the world that was. Well, let's turn to that. Let's turn to that right, right quick. Turn with me to 2 Peter. Glory be to God. 
Second Peter, and let's look at the second chapter. And it says here, Glory, glory, glory. Now, it says here, look at the second chapter in the fourth verse. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved into judgment, and spared not the old world. So see, God did not spare the old world. But what did he do? He saved Noah's world. You see that? Remember, we talked about that, Genesis 1 through 7. And then in verse 8 it says, But Noah found grace in the sight of God. Well, see, it says right here, And spared not the old world, but saved Noah. Saved Noah's world. What did he do? Bring it in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. So God destroyed that world. Follow me now. He destroyed that world. He did not, uh, uh, he destroyed the old world. He destroyed the people that was in Noah's world. Okay? And what happened? Turn over here to the third chapter and the fourth verse. It says here, By which the world that then was, I'm talking about the old world now, being overflowed with water perished. So God destroyed that old world being overflowed with water perished. You see, so he destroyed the old world. He brought water again to destroy the ungodly men on Noah's world. But notice the difference. In the world that was, there was no ark. In the world that was, all those men was wicked, so they all got destroyed. In Adam's world, which is Noah's world, God did the same identical thing. However, he built an ark to save what? To save mankind and to save all the animals. So by him making this ark, this ark was uh, uh, created so that he would have a way to continue on this lifespan doing this man. But God said, well, I would no more, though, destroy this earth like I have done in time past and past before. Isn't that something? So it says here, but which the world that then was, being overflowed with water, perished. But the heavens and the earth which are now, so the heavens and the earth which are now, okay, by the same word are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and the perdition of the ungodly men. So the punishment of these ungodly men. So these ungodly men are the men in the world that was, these evil spirits. They're, uh, they're being reserved because they got a right to be here. And this earth and heaven is being reserved. You see, see, so when, when, uh, when the first man went bad, when that Satan man said, I will ascend into heaven, when he, he is the one that causes earth to tremble. And we talked about that many times, how the devil causes earth to tremble, who did shake kingdoms, who caused the earth to become like a wilderness. You see, so he is the man. Is this the man? Sure he was. He is the one that caused this. But God is the one that carried out the judgment. Can you annul my judgment, says God? You see, he had done these things in this uh, that world when in cahoot with the devil. You see, so it says here, But the heavens and the earth, which are now, by the same word are kept in store, reserved unto fire. So it's reserved unto fire, uh-huh, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment. So, against that day of judgment, the time is come, and the time is coming. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish. So, God don't want anyone in this world system here today to perish. But he wants you to what? Come into repentance. Come into repentance. Glory be to God. So, this is so important. That the coming of the Lord Jesus is coming soon. And are you ready? Say, Jesus, Jesus, come into my heart, Lord. Forgive me, Lord, for my wrongdoing. Give me your grace. Give me your peace. Oh, Jesus, save me. And Jesus says, your sin be forgiven. Go and sin no more. Amen. 
Amen. Glory be to God. Yes, indeed. Thank God for his goodness. I tell you, the Lord is wonderful, isn't he? Oh, yes, indeed. Yes, turn with me to Leviticus. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus. Now, look at the 20th chapter. We're going to talk about these beasts. See, these animals that God has given, you know, there's a there's a do-nots that these animals uh, shouldn't do. And there's some do-nots that mankind shouldn't do. And God is angry about these things. Therefore, I must therefore speak. Now, in the 15th verse of chapter number 20, it says, If a man lie with a beast, he shall surely be put to death, and ye shall slay the beast. You see that? If a man lie with beasts, so you are not to lie with beasts like you would mankind, or you shall surely be put to death. So that was that was the old law. God does not like that sin. And animals in violation, and man, when they do these things. You see? Ye shall slay the beast. So you kill a man, and you kill the beast as well. You see, if a woman approach unto any beast and lay down thereto, thou shalt kill the woman and the beast. So if a woman did these things, lie with the beast, you shall kill the woman and the beast. Now that was the law. Thank God we have grace today that you can be forgiven. But this just lets you know how God hated that sin. Isn't that something? Glory be to God. This is, this is, this is terrible. Now, look at Exodus, the 22nd chapter. I'll show you God is against this thing, and it's a shame that they've got this different type sex farms and this different stuff that's on the, on, 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 on the Internet, that, that, that God forbid that this world would come to this. But this is God hates this, and it's a total violation. It's uttered, it's uttered from the pit of hell, uh, ordained by Satan himself, that he would, he would do these things. You see, now... The 22nd chapter, in the 19th verse, what does it say? Whosoever lies with the beast shall surely be put to death. So there it says again, a person should be put to death. Now, you know what? The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. If you're doing these sins and the devil's got you captured, then behold, hell is moved to meet thee at thy coming. It is stirred up for thee. The chief one is there to escort you down to hell. And when you get there, they'll say, Have you become weak like one of us? Have you become like it unto us? Your pope is brought down here to hell. The worm is spread under thee, and the worm is spread over thee. Hell is real. And God is saying, Listen, if he spared not that old world, and you know that he didn't spare that world, then he will not spare you. The only salvation is in Christ Jesus. So call on the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he's near. Call on the Lord while he may be found. He will wipe away your tears. Call on him. Glory to God. Call on him now. Look at the 21st chapter of Exodus in the 28th verse. What does it say? If an ox gore a man or a woman that they die, then the ox shall be surely stoned and his flesh shall not be eaten, but the owner of the ox shall be cleared. But if the ox were accustomed to push and his horn in time past and it had been testified to his owner and he had not kept him in, but that he had killed a man or woman, the ox shall be stoned, and his owner also shall be put to death. So it is not the will of God for these animals to gore or to push a man. So animals, in their original state, they knew, they knew the obedience to mankind. They were to serve man. And I talked about how these animals could communicate in the world that was, with a verbal understanding and how uh, these animals were servant unto man and how they were supposed to uh, only ask questions and be submissive, you see. And we talked about that. And it says here, this is a do not if an ox or any animal was to do this. 
So for a dog to bite a child in our world system, that is that is uh, that is totally against animal law. That is in violation. And Satan is behind these things. These animals are not to strike mankind. We've been given. We they've been delivered unto us through Noah. When God spared Noah, He said, "Listen, these animals." have been delivered unto you. You see, delivered means that you have power over them. Just like Jesus Christ. You see, we have, he has, he has translated us into his kingdom. We have been delivered from the power of darkness and translated into the kingdom of his dear son. We have been delivered from. You see, so when you're delivered from, that means you're taken from some place and put someplace else. So these, the animals where God took these animals that, that was in a fallen state and said, hey, listen, I am delivering these animals unto you. Because God knew that these animals were fallen. But he said, listen, no, I'm delivering these animals unto you. And so if an animal is coming up against you, you got every right over that animal in the name of Jesus. But God has given you that power, and these animals have been delivered unto you. So don't be afraid of no snake. Don't be afraid of no serpent. Don't be afraid of a scorpion. For God has given you power to thread on serpents and scorpions and over all the ability of the enemy and nothing. I say nothing shall by enemies hurt you. So as just as he has delivered these animals subject unto you, he has delivered the enemy. Satan himself is subject unto us. So they've been delivered all power in his name, all glory is in his name, and in that wonderful, magnificent, outstanding name of Jesus. And we are in that name. We are born of that name. So we have power, you see, in this earth realm. So don't be afraid of the terror by day. Don't be afraid by the arrow by night. Don't be afraid of anything. For God has given his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways, lest you dash your feet against the stone. You see, now, it says here, let's look down here. Verse number 31, whether he had God a son, now let's back it up to verse 30. If there be laid upon him a sum of money, then he shall give for the ransom of his life whatsoever is laid upon him. What, whether he have God a son or have God a daughter, according to this judgment shall it be done unto him. So who is him? What is he talking about? Well, He's talking about his owner also shall be put to death, but his also shall be laid upon him a sum of money. So he may have to pay. And according to this judgment shall it be done unto him. If the ox shall push a manservant or maidservant, he shall give unto their master thirty shackles of silver, and the ox shall be stoned. You see, so, glory be to God. Oh, isn't this something? That animal. Animals are wonderful things, but there's do nots that animals shouldn't do. And again, I say an animal should not what? It should not lie with mankind. Mankind should not lie with an animal. An animal should not gore or push mankind. That means to, uh, to gnaw or even to bite or even by any means hurt mankind. And animals um, uh, are to be given a command or order or declaration to do something. And they in themselves should not give a command. They should not order mankind. And they should not give any declaration. So it's important that we know these things this day because Satan has become more and more wicked. And he is using, he's using more and more these creatures to help destroy mankind. He's using these animals by doing sexuality. And God, he knows God hates that. And so people are going to hell. See, Satan is pulling every trick out of the bag he can come up with. And so he's using these animals to do these different things, you see. And um, you'd be surprised how these animals can get involved in sin that can cause someone to miss God. So we need to be wise. We need to bind the devil and we need to walk in the authority and know that we've got power over all things in the name of Jesus. You see. Now, it says here, now, if we look, if we if we think about it, these animals that God has given, you see, they were in the Old Testament. They were used and given um, as uh, sacrifices. 
So let's look at this. Let's look at Exodus, the 29th chapter, and the 10th verse. And let's try to understand what God is saying here. The 29th chapter and the 10th verse, it says, And thou shalt, shalt cause a bullock to be brought before the tabernacle of the congregation, and Aaron and his sons shall put their hands upon the head of the bullock, and thou shalt kill the bullock before the Lord by the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And thou shalt take of the blood of the bullock and put it upon the horns of the altar with thy finger and pour all the blood beside the bottom of the altar. So we don't offer up sacrifice today. You see, because Jesus Christ is the perfect lamb. Jesus, Jesus Christ is, is the one who is the perfect sacrifice, you see. So there's no need that animals to be sacrificed. But in the world that uh, that was, or in the world that uh, before Jesus came in, these things were a normal thing. As a matter of fact, they were required to do these things. So the point of us relating this is just to get an idea of how these animals, well, let's, let's just let God explain to us right here. It says here in verse number uh, 13, And thou shalt take all the fat that covered the inwards, and the fat that is above the liver, and the two kidneys and the fat that is upon and that the fat that is upon them and burn them up upon the altar but the flesh of the bullock and his skin and his dung shall thou burn with fire outside the camp it is a sin offering so you burn the flesh and all the outward parts uh, outside the camp it's a sin offering but what what do you do with the other parts for an offering unto god they burn what they burn the fat so God wanted the fat. He said, bring me the fat that covered the inward parts and the fat that is above the liver. You see that? Look at verse 10, verse 15. Thou shalt also take one ram, and Aaron and his sons shall put their hands upon the head of the ram, and thou shalt slay the ram, and thou shalt take his blood and sprinkle it round and about upon the altar. And thou shalt cut up the ram in pieces and wash the inwards of him, and his legs, and put them upon, upon, put them unto his pieces, and unto his head. And thou shalt burn the whole ram upon the altar. It is a burnt offering unto the Lord. It is a sweet uh, savor, an offering made by fire unto the Lord. And thou shalt take the other ram, and Aaron and his sons shall put their hands upon the head of the ram. Then shalt thou kill the ram, and take of his blood, and put it upon the tip of the right ear of Aaron and upon the tip of the right ear of his sons, and upon the thumb of their right hand, and upon the great toe of their right foot, and sprinkle the blood upon the altar round about. You see, so this is the thing that had to be done. But oh, thank God for Jesus. You see that we don't have to do these things now, but there was a reason, significance, because God knew that these animals is what caused the destruction of this Adam man, when, when Satan used this serpent to beguile Eve, and Adam stand right along there with her, that the devil wanted to take the animals out, and he wanted to take mankind out. So not only was the animals being sacrificed, but man, whole life was sacrificed. But God used these animals, you see, and used mankind by them both coming together to do this, to help preserve this earth system up until the time Jesus Christ is born. Not only Jesus Christ's birth, but his, his birth, his death, and his resurrection. So God had a plan in all of this. So these things had to be done in order to sustain this balance of nature. This balance of nature that God in his wisdom had to do. This balance of nature where these animals have to do these things in order that mankind can be preserved. And so God has reserved this earth system. He has reserved the days. He has reserved the months and the season. Up until when? Up until the day of judgment, you see. So that time is coming. Glory, 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 that time is coming. Glory, glory, glory.
Yes, this subject lesson of the balance of nature. Now, if we look at Genesis, let's turn let's turn back to Genesis for a moment. And let's uh, sum this lesson on up by talking about the created uh, the created world versus the world that was formed. Now, if we look at in the very beginning in the first chapter and let's look at uh, verse number 20. And God said, Let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life, and the fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of the heaven. And God created great sea monsters and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind, and every winged fowl after its kind, and God saw that it was good. Now you notice in verse 21 it said, God created. You see, so God created these creatures that was in the world that was. Now remember now, the first part of Genesis, when it says, in the beginning God created the heaven and earth, and verse 2, it says the earth was without form and void, that something happened. But when you go to verse 3, it says, and God said, let there be light, and there was light, then that was the beginning of the creation of the world that was. So, we find out here, then, that when God goes to the uh, 20th uh, verse, and talks about letting the waters bring forth, and in verse 21, God created so the waters brought forth, and when God said let, that was the creative power coming into play. For when God said let, that is the beginning of his creative power. So when he said let the waters bring forth, the waters brought forth. Well, back it right on back up here. When he said in verse 14, and let there be lights in the firmament, in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. When he said let, then there it was. So God's power is in the let. So when he created, remember he created the great sea monsters. So God created these things and then God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let the fowl multiply in the earth. You see? Now, the sixth day, and God said, let the earth bring forth the living creature. So notice now that the earth is bringing forth the living creature. He said, let, and then there it was. You see, whenever he said, let, there it is, instantaneously. If he said, let us go over yonder, then there you are. You see, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, when he said, let, there it is. And God made the beasts of the earth after his kind, and the cattle after that kind, and every creeping, and everything that creeps upon the earth after his kind. So, what did God do? God created the beasts of the earth after his kind, and God created these other things. But you notice that after he had formed Adam, now we're talking about the Adam man now. This was done in the world that was. But in Adam's world, you see in the uh, second chapter in the eighth verse, it says, And the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a help fit for him. Verse 19, And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field. So out of the ground, God formed. Well, God formed the animals in the world that we're in today, but he had created those animals in the world that was. God destroyed everything he had created, both man and beast. You see, God created those things and he destroyed them. But in the world that we're in today, out of the animals that he formed out of the ground, God did not do what? You see, God did not destroy all the things that he formed. Now, he destroyed them, being that he destroyed them off of, the, off of the face of the ground, but he did not destroy them off of the face of the earth. You see, in the world that was, he destroyed man, beast, cattle, everything off of the face of the earth, so that it was all destroyed. But in our world, through Noah, God saved Noah's world by, in, by putting Noah in the ark along with the animals. You see, so he saved the animals that he had formed out of the ground. So you say, well, what's the difference? Well, there's a difference. 
when you create something, the creation of something is the first made, first original. See, the same man was created. God created that man. But this Adam man, he was formed. You see, he was formed from something that was already here. But when God creates something, it never existed before. When he said, let it happen, then it happened for the first time. So when he said, let there be, then there it was. That is the creation. But out of the ground, God did not say, let there be. He just took this man, this Adam man, and formed him out of something that was already here. He formed him out of some of these elements that are already in the ground today, and he formed him out of dust. For dust thou art, and for dust he shall return after he had sinned. But this Adam man, along with these animals, was formed out of the ground. So by them being formed out of the ground, these animals, and also this Adam man, we are made out of dust. So dust we are, and dust we shall return. You see, so these animals are made out of dust. So it's very important that we understand. The first man was created, and the first animals, they were created. When he said, let the earth bring forth, they were created. You see, so what does it mean to be created? First made or an original. Just like they make um, uh, samples, like they make the original copy. Uh, like they have these masters in the record industry. These are the masters. These are the original copy. This is the first. But everything else is a copy or a mold. Or everything else is a duplicate. So to be created was the original form. But uh, it was the original way. But to be formed is a copy or a mold or a duplication. So it is a copy of something that is original. So when you make a manuscript, that is the original writing, but then you make copies of it. Uh, when you make a, a typewritten letter, then you make copies of the original. You see, when you have something, um, you know, that is ordained, you see, then you have that which is copies from the original ordination papers, you see. So it's very important that we understand that the world that was was created and the world that we in, that we're here today, we were formed from the world that was. Now, there's a difference between us two, but God wants us to know the difference because that's the only way you're going to understand uh, more about the things of God. So you want to know more about God, you need to understand more about his word, and you need to understand that there was a world that was, that perished, and there's a world that is today. And when we talk about God's creation, that we're talking about the creation of the world that was, Versus the creation of the Adam man's world. There's a big difference between the two. So, let us end with this today. And let us look forward to our next lesson. And as we abound and increase in God's goodness, we shall abound and increase even more in spiritual understanding. So, let us pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you right now that the word that is gone forth, that it enter into the heart of man, that they become wise to your knowledge, that they may abound and increase in your wisdom, that we may understand you even the more. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you in the name of Jesus.